So let's check out this 3D scanner from Revel Point. And this is the Pop 2 Premium Package. So it comes with all the accessories inside of this nice carrying case. And as you can see, they packed a lot into this small case, which is actually pretty nice to have, seeing that you can use most of this as a mobile setup. And having everything in one spot is also really nice for storage. But anyways, here's the actual scanner itself, which is pretty small and lightweight. And there's just a single port on the back for data and power, along with a single pause and play button. And here's everything removed from that case, like all the cables you would need to use this with a computer or a phone. There's also this battery bank and a phone holder that you can put together with everything else and have your very own cyberpunk looking magical girl wand that can 3D scan stuff. And with a tripod on the bottom of it, you can make it even longer. The only thing I don't have on here is the wiring, which will power the scanner. This does come with a turntable top, along with a miniature turntable that you can power off of batteries or, or plug it in via USB. It did come with this little statue so you can do some test scans, and it's quite a bit smaller than the one that came with the original POP scanner. Putting the scanner onto the tripod is as easy as just sliding this onto the quick release, and it's good to go. And before I do anything else, I'm going to go through the user's manual and actually see how to use this thing properly. So give me a second. A few moments later. All right, now that I have everything set up properly and my cable plugged into a 3.0 port on my computer, I can actually get scanning. This is the Revel Point software on my computer, and as you can see, it has multiple preview windows. This way you can see if your object is too close, in frame, or overexposed, and fix it and move stuff around. So with everything to my liking, I'm going to start a new print. And as you can see, you have lots of options to choose from for different scanning modes. But for this scan, it's going to be pretty easy. It's going to be the high accuracy with features as a scanning mode and no color. And with all that set, all I need to do is push play and it'll start scanning. As you can see, there's some green and blue on the screen and all the green spots are the newly scanned areas and all the blue is already scanned. And all you need to really do is let this do one rotation and you should have a full scan for that position. And then just push stop and complete and it should fuse all your cloud points together before moving on to the next step. And here we go. This is our first scan and it looks pretty good. I move the position and it's going to scan a little bit more of the base and and you're just going to have to rinse and repeat this until you have a full model. So I can get the top and bottom of this filled in. I'm going to lay this on its side. It doesn't really matter what orientation you have it at. As long as it has some previous data so it can line itself up, it'll find where everything needs to go. And sometimes it'll pick up stuff on the background or even the base plate. And usually it will kind of sort itself out and not be in the final point cloud. But if it doesn't, it can be removed later on as well. So after about four scans, this is what I have. These are all individual points right now. So I need to convert it into a mesh. And there's some holes in here that you can see that will be fixed when it turns to a mesh. And to do that, I'm just gonna go over here to the mesh settings and set them up to the highest quality and make sure to fill holes and then just click the start button on it basically. And after a few minutes, I have my finished 3D scanned model. And as you can see, it came out really nice and there's no holes or anything like that in it anywhere or odd blobs or anything like that going on. And now it can be exported as an STL, an OBJ file or one other, I believe. I'm going to export it as STL and then 3D print it. And about four and a half hours later, here it is. I just need to remove it from its build plate and then remove the supports for the eyebrows and nose, which all come off pretty easy with no tools and barely leave any marks behind. It does look like I needed to add some supports to the back so I wouldn't get this drooping, but it should be fine. So here they are side by side so we can compare them and you can see that they're about the same size and shape. There are some small details that seem to got lost in the scan and then the print and the face looks a little slimmer than the original ones. But after doing some measurements, it is a slight bit smaller, but not by much. I think it's more of a material lighting problem than it actually being that off. And here's a bit of a closer look. The little like seam on the side of the face is the Z seam of the 3D printer because I didn't set any of that when I did this. So it's not part of the actual scan. Overall, this is a really good scan. And of course it is because the model I scanned is pretty much the perfect thing to scan being a matte white and organic shapes. So let's try scanning something small like this miniature and see if it does any better than the original pop, seeing that when I tried doing that, it just couldn't pick up anything really. And it would just lose tracking. It was just too small of an object to scan. And on the pop two, it did have an easier time picking this up, even though it is a smaller object. That being said, it still was not perfect by any means, but I was surprised by some of the smaller bits of this that it did pick up. And honestly, this scanner is not meant for small objects like this. It's meant for like more medium sized to large objects. 
And just as a comparison, here is a scan on a $6,000 jewelry grade 3D scanner. And as you can see, it can pick up just about every little detail. But it's about, I don't know, 10 times the price as this. And this is only limited to small objects, nothing bigger than 80 millimeters. And at the time of recording this, they just released their new Kickstarter campaign for their new Revel Point Mini, which is designed to scan smaller and more detailed objects. And I don't have one on hand to test, but I have some footage from YouTube to show a comparison between two models that were scanned with the Pop 2 and the Mini. And from this video, it looks like the Mini does a much better job with getting finer details and sharper edges. And if I happen to get one in, I will make sure to make a video about it up against my expensive scanner and see how it compares. But anyways, let's go to the opposite spectrum and scan something larger. And for this, I'm going to need to use a 3D scanning spray. And this stuff is very expensive. So if you can wash the area off afterwards, you can go ahead and use a foot spray like this and it'll do the same job. Along with that, I'm going to be using these little marker stickers. As for what we're scanning, I want the shape of this lens of a Del Sol's headlight. And as you can see, it's clear. So let's start off by putting all the stickers onto it. So the scanner will have something to go off of when scanning. And this is pretty much a must on large objects, seeing that it has nothing to really track if there's no details on it and it'll get lost. So with all my stickers on, I can spray over this and make everything a nice matte white. And that way my scanner can actually pick up all the details and the shapes and everything. And of course, so I can actually scan something that's translucent. I'm going to use this little air gun to dry everything out a little bit quicker. So with the entire area prepped and ready, I can use the mobile setup of this and start it, connect it to the scanner and start scanning away. Once I press the button at the top or on the screen, it gives you three seconds to get in place and get ready to scan. The whole scanning process is pretty easy. You just need to move slow and be close enough. There's a little thing at the top that tells you if you're too close or too far or just right. And in my experience, I get better results if I scan smaller areas, then stop the scan, let it make it point cloud, and then start a new scan, and then kind of piece them all together. And here's my first scan, which looks pretty good. And you can do everything that you could on a computer with this on your phone. The only downside I've found so far is it eats your battery with all the processing power it's using. So I'm going to do another scan or two and then throw it over to my computer so we can get a better look at it. And here we go. So I had to stop the scanning early because my phone was at 3% and I didn't want to lose everything. So I just stopped it where it was. And even with the holes in the lens, this is good enough for what I would be using it for seeing that I just need the shape of the lens. And this came out pretty good for a quick 10 minute scan. And if I zoom in, you can even see the little raised marks from the stickers. So not bad and I'm pretty impressed with that. I didn't lose any tracking on it when I was working with it either. So you could totally use this for prototyping new parts for cars or making replacements. And of course, removing the part and being able to scan all of it would be best. But for what I'm doing, this will work perfectly fine. And the last thing I wanted to show is that you can do full color scans, which I have absolutely no use for, but other people might. So as you can see, this came out all right. It's a little blurry, and if I put more effort into doing this, it'd probably be a little bit better, and it wouldn't have a hole at the bottom of it. But it's, like I said, something I don't care about, but an option if it's something you're looking for. So to sum everything up, I do like this scanner, and it has a lot of features that are very helpful or just make things a lot quicker, like how it automatically aligns everything for you, and it does a pretty good job at it. And if you've seen my video on the CR Lizard from Creality, it had the hardest time aligning stuff after the fact, and you pretty much had to manually do it. It's also really nice that you can use this in a mobile setup with a phone to scan things if you needed to, or hook it up to your laptop. And it's all with just one cord. But those are my thoughts on this and my use cases, so they might be different for you. But I hope at least you found this helpful. And if you want to check out the other videos on other scanners I've done, they should be on the screen now. Well, thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.